So this morning, um, hopefully not for too long, we can um, just explore some of the, the things, as I was um, saying before, that are going to be like the foundation for our studies going forward into the book of Daniel, chapter 11. Um, generally, when we, we, we explore or um, dig into the book of Daniel, and especially chapter 11, we begin at the, 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 the chapter 11 as it is um, sectioned or divided into chapters. But if we, if we do that, we're going to find that we're going to have a challenge in understanding um, the precursor to that or how, how we go forward. And D Daniel chapter 10 is where we, we find that um, platform for um, entering into the study of Daniel chapter 11. All right. Uh, so I want us to look at um, the vision or what happened in Daniel chapter 10. All right here. Let me just make it a little bigger so that we can all see. All right. Is this is this a big enough um yeah. is the phone big enough? Phone big enough? Yes. All right. So it is clear. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to begin here and see if we can you know, just make some some things clear or to get some things, um, a foundation, a proper foundation for what we're going to go into, going into. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking that we're going to have time enough today to go through both chapters, but um, however far we are able to go, then we're going to see how much we can get out of it by the grace of God. All right, so it begins in the year of the third year of Cyrus. So, so this information is very important too, the third year. All right, so all of what we're going to read, there's nothing that should be overlooked. All right, because some key information we can find in everything that we are going to read. It says, Daniel speaking says, in the third year of Cyrus, King of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. So here Daniel begins by telling us what had already transpired he said that in the third year of the king um the king whose name was cyrus who was the king of persia there was revealed something unto him something was revealed to him and he's saying that he understood it but there was a time that was appointed for the thing and the time was a long time all right it says, in those days, which would be in the days of the third year of the king, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. It says, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled how many days we find in three weeks Twenty-one. all right 21 i just trying to keep you you know focus so it says for three full weeks which means for 21 days it says now and in the four and 20th day of the first month, which is the 24th day of the month, 
as I was by the side of the great river, which is Idekel. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the burial, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Anybody remember hearing such a description of a person before? Anywhere in the Bible? In Revelation? In Revelation, of course, Sister Anna. Let me see if I can go there. Um, let me just open another. And let me see if I can. Let me just put it beside it. All right. So in Revelation. Uh, did it go? One, enter. All right. So let me go to Revelation. All right. All right. So here is the. Uh, speaking. All right. All right. It says now. John says in chapter um one of Revelation, it says in verse 12, and I, and I turned to see the voice that speak with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. It says his head and hairs, his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Look at this now. It says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burnt in a furnace. And look at this now. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Or as Daniel said, a multitude. So we see that what Daniel was seeing must also be what John described as one like the Son of Man, which of course was Christ or the Messiah. All right? So who John was seeing, the person that John was seeing, is clearly Christ. In verse 7, it continues, it says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was stirred in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Now, this was just a vision. John was just seeing a vision, and the effect of the vision was that it says, there remained no strength in me. It says, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. Or in other words, whatever it was about me that was of any um, 
worth of glory or praise was turned into nothing. He realized that he was all of what could be praised about him, all that, that could be um, people could glorify him about. All of his all, all of his um, pride or the things that he could feel proud about. He says, was turned into me into corruption. Right? What he saw was greater than anything that he could find in himself or in anybody else. Right? So if, if you sometimes you you look at um, something that you have or some attribute that you have, and then you realize that there is a far greater um, glory to that thing or attribute in somebody else, then you realize, wow, I don't have anything. What I, what I thought I had is foolishness. And so um, Daniel saw that everything as it relates to comeliness that could be um, spoken of him about was just like corruption because it was far greater in what he was seeing. And says, and I returned, and I retained rather no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his, his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. Now this is the effect of the vision of the Son of Man upon um, Daniel. This is the effect of just seeing a vision and hearing the voice of his, of his words. It says now, and behold, a hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling you can imagine daniel was being told that he is a man that is greatly beloved and these words weren't coming from human lips but this is the word from heaven that comes to daniel to tell him that he is a man in the heavenly courts that is greatly beloved and he's now told to understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. And he says that he was trembling while he stood. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. Now this person is saying to Daniel, you see from the first day you started to pray. Look at, you remember how many days he said that he was um, praying? Remember? Keep it on that day. For, for three full weeks, right? 21 days. It said, here it says that, from the very first day, it says, from the first day that you, you set your heart to understand. So what was Daniel's purpose or reason for chastening himself or coming to God in such a manner? It is to what? Understand. Are we seeing that? Daniel wanted to understand. And, 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 and really, understanding is what the Bible refers to as light. Without understanding, the people are in darkness. When Christ gave 
parables. The people heard the parables, but they could not understand. So as it relates to, the, to, to what the purpose of the parable was, the people were still in darkness. But the disciples, when they came together, they asked him the meaning of those parables and the Lord would, would give them understanding, which would be light. Now, there were some things that were, were evading um, Daniel as it relates to the prophecies that were spoken before um, Jer by Jeremiah and the prophets before. And he was searching these books and he wanted understanding because he realized that the time was coming to an end that the prophecies that, um, that Jeremiah spoke about, that the children of Israel should be in bondage or under Babylonian captivity for 70 years. He saw that the time period was coming to its end, but he did not understand exactly what is to, is to, is to happen going forward. And so here we see why Daniel was chastening himself before God. He wanted understanding. But here, this person that touched him and was speaking to him said to him, fear not, for from the first day that you wanted to gain understanding or you set your heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Verse 13 tells us something very important that was happening behind the scenes that was invisible. It says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. So from the very first day, I want you, you were praying, I wanted to give you understanding. But there was the prince of Persia was withstanding me or he withstood me for those 21 days. But guess what? I get some help. It says, that's why it says now, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. All right. This verse, I'm just going to, I'm going to um, summarize first and then I'm going to um, give a different account of this, these few words here that I'm highlighting. So we see that. Daniel wanted to, to gain some understanding. Here, an, 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 an angel, it appears, was sent to answer Daniel. But it says the prince of the kingdom or the chief of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. That is why I did not come to you in the first day, because I, I was being withheld from coming for those 21 days. But I received help from Michael, the same one that you saw in the vision. The same person you saw in the vision, that is the one who came to, he and to help me. And he's the chief of the princes, right? And it says now, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. I'm going to see if I can find another translation for this so it can be, it can um, come across a little more clearly. Um, so this is verse 13. All right. It might seem a little. All right, so I'm going to use some other translations here. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, All right. 
Look at this. I don't know what version is this. All right, let me use the ESV. It says, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. Are you seeing that? Let me see if I can read, read another one. Um, look at what's this GW um, or look at this one it says this one commander the commander of the Persian kingdom opposed me for 21 days but then Michael one of the chief commanders came to help me because I was left alone with the kings of Persia hope you're seeing that um, getting the idea coming across better Look at the um, ISV. It says, however, the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Then all of a sudden, Michael, one of the chief angels, came to assist me. I had been detained there near, um, near the kings of Persia. Uh, is it coming a little clearer to you? Let me find out. Um, Let's see if I can find um, our NET. It says, however, the prince of the kingdom of Persia was opposing me for 21 days. But Michael, one of the leading princes, came to help me because I was left there with the kings of Persia. All right. What this is, to, is trying to emphasize is that this angel was left to oversee the affairs of the kings, the kingdom of Persia, and it's for a specific reason. I'm going to show you why. This angel, or this person here described, was left to oversee the affairs of Persia. And while he was there, Daniel was spring, right? And while Daniel was praying, he wanted to go and answer Daniel's prayer. But because he was overseeing the affairs of the kings of Persia, something was happening in the kingdom that prevented him from going to answer Daniel at the, at the time when he started praying. And so Michael came to help him so that he was, was able to, to help or to give Daniel understanding. All right. So, just to um to to emphasize and to make it a little clearer, is that the kings of Persia, an angel was put in the kingdom to oversee that kingdom. There's an angel that was put to oversee that kingdom until something was complete. And because he was overseeing the kingdom, he's also the one that is to give understanding. And you'll see why he was the only one that could go to Daniel. No other angel could go to, to Daniel, but this angel. So, but he was also overseeing the kingdom of Persia. But the king or the, the, the prince or the chief of the kingdom was with, withholding him or he withstood him for 21 days. And we're going to go a little bit into that as we continue. So, hope you see. Um, or let me just go back with this one. All right. So, what it's saying is that. Um, we are, where are we? In verse, verse um, 14. So, so Michael is the one who came to help him because he was the one who was overseeing the, 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 the kings of Persia. He says, now I am come to make thee understand 
what shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. So for him to come to Daniel, it must mean that he would have been victorious or some victories would have been won in that, um, that, that debate or that conflict between himself and the king of Persia. Now it says now, and when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground. And I became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned unto me. You remember what he saw? He saw Michael. He saw the, 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 um, the chief of the princes. And he spake unto him. And he's telling this angel now that when I saw this vision, my sorrows were turned upon me and I retained no, no strength. He says, for how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me and said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou therefore, or, or knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. All right, so I'm going to see if we can um, unpack some of this. This person or this angel that was speaking to Daniel was saying to him, I am now come to give you understanding, understanding in the things that are to come in the future as it relates to, the, to, to, to your people and the kingdom of your people. I wanted to come at the first day when you started praying, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for those 21 days. And so Michael, the prince, the same one that you saw in the vision, who, when you saw, there was no strength left in you. He came to help me. And because he had come to help me, I was able to leave this post where I was placed in the king kingdom of Persia. And so I am come to give you understanding. But when I'm finished giving you understanding, I will have to go back to my post where I was placed to fight with the prince of Persia. But when I am gone from fighting or from standing in that post, lo, the prince of Greece will come. 
But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And guess what? Nobody else is able to reveal these things to you but Michael and myself. Because there is none that hold understanding of these things but myself and Michael, your prince. Are you seeing that? Is that what you're getting? So the person or this angel says, that is why it was either Michael or me. But I was placed at, a, at my position in the kingdom of Persia to oversee matters in the kingdom of Persia. And so I was, I was the one to make you understand the prophecy or understand this thing that you were seeking for to understand. But I could not come to make you understand because while in my post, I was being withstood. I was withstood by the, 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 the prince of Persia. And so the only other person who hold it with me in these things, who could help us you to understand was Michael. So what he did was to come to take my place to win that battle so I could do what? Come and give you understanding. And now I'm come to give you understanding of these things. Now I'm going to just read the first part of Daniel chapter 11. And you'll see why we needed Daniel chapter 10 to go into Daniel chapter 11. Also, it says, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. Somebody tell me who is, who is, who is here, um, who is the speaker here? Who is the person that is speaking here? Daniel. Gabriel. I hear two answers. I hear Gabriel. Is that what I heard? Yes. And and I hear Daniel. Is the, um Anna said Gabriel. Me. Oh Jadana. Yes. Okay. All right. That's very good. You're very you're observing Jadana. You're making. You're following. It's very key. Look at what look at what is happening again. I'm gonna show you where we're coming from here. Although we didn't call any any name of any person who old, but we'll see afterwards that it is Gabriel that is really given or appointed to give understanding of the prophecies. We're gonna we're gonna see that a little um further on, and we're gonna see that also in um in the book of Revelation. But look at what it's saying. Look who is speaking. Remember now. The Bible or, or, or the scriptures were not separated into chapters until later on, right, in, in, the, in our history or in our past history. Now, it was, it was um, later segmented into chapters. But if you are to read this, forgetting that there were chapters, Coming from verse 21, it says, but I, who is this I? Angel. The angel. Very good. It says, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that ordered with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Also, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now I will show thee the truth. You see that? So all along it is the angel or that person who told Daniel that I am come to give you understanding. He it was the speaker. But if you just take up the book of Daniel and read, you might think that it was Daniel that was speaking of himself, concerning himself here. 
note the angel says that i was left to oversee the kings or the, the affairs of the kingdom of persia so when the king when the kingdom of persia came because it was babylon then the medes and the persians when they came the angel was also appointed at that time to remain in this kingdom until the time for this kingdom is, is, is expired. There's a reason for that. I'm going to show you. So the angel is appointed to this particular kingdom for a particular reason. And it is the thing that Daniel was praying and, and seeking understanding, seeking for, um, seeking for understanding why he was in prayer for 21 days, all right? And the, the angel, that or, or Gabriel, I mean, I mean I, I haven't um, proven to you that it is Gabriel just yet, but it is Gabriel, and I'm gonna show you afterwards. But Gabriel came to him to give him understanding. And, he, and Gabriel is saying, I was also in the first year of Darius. I was the one who strengthened him. You see that? So ever since the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians came on the scene, an angel was appointed over the kingdom to oversee the affairs because God was to do something during the time period of the reign of this kingdom. And so the angel was there um to confirm and to strengthen even darius and he says no and i will now show you the truth then he says behold there shall stand up yet three kings in persia and the fourth shall be far richer than they all and by his strength through his riches he shall stir up all against the realm of greece or Grecia. All right? So I'm not going to go past here just yet, but I, I just want us to see um, clearly that from chapter 10, we see that the angel declared himself to be the one who, whom God had appointed to stand or to remain with the kings of Persia until the time of the kings of Persia is finished. He would leave. And when he is left, or had left, then the king or the prince of Persia, um, of Greece yeah, would come. Now, I want us to look at, I want us to pay, or before, before I go there, let me just show you something. As we read a while ago, it says, it says, behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in persia who remembers the name of the first of the king that was currently reigning cyrus what's the name cyrus cyrus or darius is darius now huh i thought it was cyrus because of the last chapter right it was cyrus i'm just asking so that you can tell me what um, you are saying clearly. I, I wasn't hearing clearly. All right. So, so it, it is in the third year of Cyrus that the, all of this is being explained. Now, when you begin in chapter 11, the angel says, Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. So he's saying that ever since the kingdom of the Mede and Persian was, 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 was in power or reigning, I was here because I was appointed to stand uh, and, and to oversee this kingdom. Now it says now, there are three kings, yet three kings in Persia to stand up. What it, the word yet means that they are not yet or or they are not have not yet reigned have not reigned as yet so there are three that is yet to stand and then it says now the fourth shall be far richer than they all look at this 
I'm going to give you a list or show you a list because this is going to be the platform where we're going to come from going forward. The first king or the king of Cyrus was the, the king at the time when the vision was given. The king Cyrus the Great is the first king. So it says there are three kings left to come. One, two, three. And it says the fourth one shall be what? Far richer than they are. When we, I don't know if we're going to have time to explore this part, but this person is the same person whose name is, I hope I'm spelling it right. Is it? I don't remember. But something like this. His name is Ahasuerus. Xerxes is the same one whose name in the Bible is referred to as Ahasuerus. I'm going to show you something in the first book. Okay. Oh, here, here is the spelling of the name. All right. So what, what specific thing did the Bible say about sir, uh, the fourth king? You remember? He was going to be far richer. He's going to be far richer than all the others, the other three. Now I'm going to show you that the Bible, the Bible um, does not leave us to guess which king this is. I'm going to read a little of this and then we, we can understand how rich this person Xerxes or Ahasuerus ha was. It says, now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was at Shushan, Persia, the, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces, being before him when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days even an hundred and four score days so for 180 days ahasuerus was showing off his, his, his riches it says now and when these days were expired the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in shushan imagine how big this feast must have been both unto great and small seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace were where were hangings green and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble and they gave them drink in vessels of gold the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king and the drinking was according to the law none did compel for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. And Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the woman in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. So you see what's happening. This king made a feast for 180 days. He showed off his is his um, riches and his wealth. And then it says, when those days were, 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 were finished, 
he had a great feast, right? Where all were in, invited for seven days. You could eat and drink as all you want because the king was rich enough to do or to throw such an event, all right? So when it says that the fourth king was far richer than they all, see if I find it again, right? Four shall be far richer than they all. It speaks of this one, the one that was fourth place after Cyrus. All right, one, two, three, four. So you can do your research on this one. His name was Xerxes. And by the way, the one following him, well, we, we go into that afterwards. But I'm going to I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back to Daniel chapter 10 and see if we can clear up what was happening here. How is it that the king, in the third year, the name of the king who withstood him was what? Cyrus or the prince. In the book of Ezra, Ezra, Ezra chapter 1. Look at these verses, beginning at verse 1. So, when did Daniel got the vision, um, get the vision again? In what year? Anybody? The third year. The, the third year. Yeah. But something, before the third year, something happened. The Lord came, or the Lord gave a command to the king. Listen to what it says. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Jehovah by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, Jehovah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, Jehovah, God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Now it says, who is there among you of the, his people, to, um, his people, his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah and build the house of Jehovah, God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. So, or, a matter of fact, it continues saying, and whosoever remained in any place where he sojourned, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. So what had happened here in the first, the very first year of the king of Cyrus? Cyrus said that God had commanded him. The Bible says here that the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. You remember that Gabriel, Gabriel or the angel that spoke with Daniel was given charge. It says he was left over to oversee the kings of Persia. So he was the one who would have been given the charge to give the commandment of God or to stir up the spirit of Cyrus. Right? So it is Gabriel that was what, who must have given Cyrus the command of God. Right? To stir up his spirit, to build. Look what he says. 
it says, he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is at Judah. So Cyrus, Cyrus was on a mission to, to obey the command that God had given him to build the, 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 um, build the house of God in Jerusalem. And he appointed builders and he appointed gold and silver and beasts right for the the the, the administ, um, administration of the temple or of the of the house of god so cyrus was given the command and cyrus was carrying out the command i'm going to see what it means that he was with um, he withstood the angel all right now in ezra chapter 3 look what happened in Ezra chapter 3, just going to look at verse 8. Um, no, no, not Ezra. That's chapter 2. I'm sorry. So Ezra 3, verse 8. Yes. Verse 8. It says, Now in the second year of their coming, unto the house of God at Jerusalem in the second month began Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Yeshua, the son of Jehozadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and Levites, and all that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord or Jehovah. Then stood Yeshua with his sons and his brethren, Kadmiel and his sons and the sons of Judah together to set forward the workmen in the house of God. Right? So they are come now to build. It says here, so the people could not, um, it says, but many of the priests and Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the house when the foundation of the house were laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping of the people so those who knew the temple before they were weeping but those who didn't they were rejoicing because the the, the temple before for those who had, who knew it it was clear to them that the temple before was far superior to this that is being built in terms of its structure. He says, for the people shouted a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. Now, look what is happening now. It says, now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto Jehovah, God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ezar Adon, king of Ashur, which brought us up either. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto him, you have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto Jehovah, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Look what happened now. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purposes all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So remember now, God had commanded Cyrus to build the house 
in Jerusalem, Cyrus made a decree that the children of Israel could go back to their land and to build the temple. And he gave them money and all that they needed to build it. But there was a group of persons that the Bible calls the adversaries. These people were stirred by Satan. Now, you're going to see that behind the scenes. Now, we're looking behind the scenes what was happening with Cyrus. Why the Bible says that he withstood Gabriel, Gabriel for 21 days. It says the people of the land weakened the hand of the people of Judah. How did they do that? They hired counselors against them. Who were the counselors counseling? To frustrate the purpose all the days of this um, Cyrus king of Persia. So the, the counselors that they hired, who were they to counsel or give counsel to? Or uh -huh. Cyrus. Very good. So they were made counselors unto Cyrus to, to stop the work or to, 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 to um, hold back the work. So Cyrus was now, there was a battle in the mind of Cyrus. And if you read further, you'll see what it is that they are accusing the people of. Right? So there was a battle in the mind of Cyrus because they were, were, were counselors that were counseling, counseling him against the very plan or will that God had given to him for his house. And so Gabriel says it was at that time that Cyrus withstood him. And guess what? Only Michael could help him because when Michael appeared unto Daniel, what it says about Daniel, what happened to Daniel? That his comeliness or his pride was turned into him as corruption. You see that? So it is not a fight. He was not fighting with, with swords or, 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 or any weapons of, 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 um, of, of mass destruction, as, as we would think of it. This fight was the fight for the mind of Cyrus. It was a fight for the for for the for the for the the the, the, the um the, the submission of the mind of Cyrus. Cyrus was already submitted to the will of God, right? But there were false um, accusers, and there were um, the adversaries of Judah that were counseling him. And because of this, and of course. Satan is the one that's behind it. We are not seeing that um, that clear yet. But we, we shall see that Satan is the one who was actually the, 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 the one that was instigating for advisors to advise Cyrus against that plan. And so Cyrus was now caught between two opinions. Right? He was leaning towards the, the accusation and so Michael because and and he could um not Michael Gabriel apparently could not go any further in terms of advising or to cause um Cyrus to follow through with the 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 the, the, the command that he was given in the first place and he needed help and the help that he got was to reveal, uh, in my understanding, based on what happened to Daniel, was to um, cause Cyrus to see or to put out So I don't where, where did I where did you lose me? You were you were talking about um, 
the, the counselor that were set up to, to counsel and stand yes. on against God's plan. Right. Struggling between two opinions. Right. Okay. All right. I've, I've, I've said a lot since then. <laughs> I was saying that they, um, Gabriel, Gabriel was, was left in charge of the kingdom of Persia until God's plan for the building of um, Jerusalem and the building of his temple was completed. So, so during the reign of the kings of Persia was the, was the, the time period for God's purposes as it regards his temple and his city to be rebuilt. And so Gabriel was appointed over this kingdom as overseer until these things were completed. Now, and, and, and that is why it says now that for those um, time of 21 days, he was withstood or withheld because there were counselors that were counseling Cyrus against the plan that God had gave, given to him from the beginning to which he had already subscribed. Right? So, so the counselors were, to, were, were through, the, through the aid of Satan to change his mind. And so there was a battle for the mind of the king. Battle for the king, the mind of the one who is to make decrees for the completion of the purposes of God. So that was what that um, that that with with um, him being withstood. Now, so so it 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 is it is clear. It says that when I am gone, when I am gone from the kingdom, from where I am appointed, because when the time is finished. I will be gone. And when I am gone, the kings, the kings of Persia, um, the kings of, sorry, the kings of kings of Greece will come. Now in Ezra chapter 5, I'm going to read probably these first few six verses. It says, so, 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 uh, no, I'm going to go at four. All right, so so verse one. So it says that the adversaries were standing against um, or sending counselors to frustrate their the purpose, right? To frustrate the purpose of God. They hired counselors to, to, to counsel Cyrus against the plan of God. And if you go down to verse 17, look what happened. Then sent the king an answer unto Reum. This is not the time of, um, I, should have, I should have said, during the time of Artaxerxes, right? So they, they sent a letter during the time of Artaxerxes, the king. This Artaxerxes would have been the, the second king, which which would be, um, no, not the second one, this one, Smerdis, right? So this one, they sent a letter to this person that reigned for with, uh, less than a year. And you're going to see that, that uh, verse 13. He said, this is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes, the king. Verse 13, it says, be it known unto the king that if this city be builded and the wall set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom? And so thou shalt end damage the revenue of the kings. Now, because we have, have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore have we sent and certified the king. So, so this is, is what they were doing speaking against the um the setting up of jerusalem because they say they say that it's going to end in damage the revenue of the king look at verse 17 um it says then sent the king an answer unto Reum, the chancellor 
and to Shimshai, the scribe, and to the rest of the company, company, companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river. Verse 23. Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehom, and Shimshai, the scribe, and the, comp and the companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem and to the Jews, and made them seize by force and power then seized the work of god the house of god which is at jerusalem so it seized unto the second year of the reign of darius of persia so when it when it says that even unto the days of darius chapter four right so the week all right right so it says even until the reign of darius so there are several kings so they did it through cyrus to canvases smerdis so it was during his time period that the work stopped and then it restarted during the time of darius see that all right so in chapter five though just going to give you a little bit more and we can pause in chapter five now it says then the prophets agai the prophet and zachariah the son of Edo, prophesied unto the jews that were in judah and jerusalem in the name of the god of israel even unto them then rose up zerubbabel the son of Sh Sh shealtiel or shealtiel and Jesh yeshua the son of Jehoshadak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, and with them were the prophets of God helping them. So against the king's command to stop the work, they were building because God sent this prophet unto them, and the prophet was helping them to build. So he sent Agai, and he sent Zechariah to tell them to continue the building against the, the will or the command of um, Artaxerxes, even though he was out of power. Now it says now, at the same time came to them Tatnai, governor on this side of um, the river, and Shethar, Bosnai, and their companions, and said thus unto them, Who hath commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? We did not get a command for you to do that. Why are you doing that? Then said we unto them after this manner, What are the names of the men that make this building? But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, that they could not cause them to cease, till the matter came to Darius. And then they returned answer by letter concerning this matter. So they said, we're not going to stop until Darius hear what's going on. Right? So these men, Tatnai, knew that they were not supposed to be building. And he was asking, who gave you command to build? Continue. And he says, we are, we are not going to stop. We want Darius to hear the matter. Right? So they sent a letter to Darius. Um... And look, look at what the letter says in verse 11. I'm going to go to All right. It says, and thus they returned us answer saying, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. All right. No, I should, uh, let, me, let me go to chapter verse 11. Yes, verse 11. It's right. And thus they returned us answer saying we are the servants of the god of heaven and earth and build the house that was builded these many years ago which a great king of israel builded and set up but after that our father has provoked the god of heaven unto wrath he gave them into the hand of nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon the chaldean who destroyed this house and carried the people away into babylon but in the first year of cyrus the king of Babylon, the same Cyrus, made a decree to build this house of God. 
and the vessels also of gold and silver um, of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought them into the temple of Babylon, those did Cyrus the king take out of the temple of Babylon, and they were delivered unto one whose name was Sheshbazar, whom he had made governor. All right? And it says now, and they said unto him, take these vessels. Let me just go to um, go to the chapter 7. Look at this now. Then Darius, the king, made a decree and search was made in the house of, uh, of the rolls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And there was found an Achmetha in the palace that is in the province of the Medes, a roll, and therein was a record thus written. What the record says, in the first year of Cyrus king, the same Cyrus, the king made a decree concerning the house of God. So Darius found that decree. And so what Darius did was to say, you know, also in verse 11, also, I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let him be hung thereon and let his house be made a dunghill for this. And the God that hath caused his name to dwell there destroy all kings and, and people that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree, let it be done with speed. So you see, during all the time of the kings of Persia, Satan was working through many means to cause the work of the building of God's house to be, um, to, to be de delayed or to, 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 um, to stop or to not be um, built at all. And so this is the purpose for the, um, the appointment of um, Gabriel in the kingdom of the Persians to, to oversee and to ensure that the work or the command that God had given Cyrus to build the temple and the sanctuary might be fulfilled. But all through those times, the Bible says that there were accusers and, and, and adversaries but the work would have been builded, as the Bible says, through troublous times. Right? And when this work was completed, then was the time that Gabriel left. And when Gabriel left, another kingdom came. But, then, but the work that God had appointed for his temple would have been already completed during the time of the Medes and the Persians. All right? I'm not going to go any further with this is just a foundation that um i was hoping that we could build so to, to understand where we're where we're coming from in the book of daniel chapter 10 and how we can proceed into understanding what is happening in the book of daniel chapter 11. all right so yeah i'm gonna pause here i don't know if there are any any questions um, relating to anything that we we went through that is not so clear, but of course it is it is always the time to ask questions about those things or to make a point or to emphasize something or to you know make something a little clearer if you are seeing it a little clearer than than was um, expressed. Yeah, praise be to God. Gabriel was commanded to give Daniel an answer from the very first day when he, when he started praying. But Daniel did not get an answer until 21 days after. Or at least 24 days. At least 21 days. Because it says on the 24th day of the month. So at least 21 days after he started seeking for understanding that um, Gabriel was able to come. Because at that time, he was being withstood by the, um, the prince of Persia, and he could not come. He could not come until help, was, help, was, um, help came from Michael, right? 
to, to, to win that battle for the mind of Cyrus. All right? To, to let what happened to Daniel happen to him. I believe that he would have seen that his pride would have been thrown to the ground. And his comeliness, as Daniel said, was, um, was uh, what's the word? His comeliness was made into corruption. All right. All right. Uh, oh, here. All right. And my compliments, compl comeliness was turned in me into corruption. And I retain, retained no strength. It's just like when, um, when uh, I think who it was that that's, um, got the vision, vision of God. Um, what's his name? The prophet um, Isaiah. When he saw the Lord and, and um, seated on his throne, and he says that is 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 um, in 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 similar words that his comeliness was turned into him in, into corruption. He, he says, "Woe is me!" You know, when he saw when he saw God, and 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 saw the 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 the, 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 the majesty, and he saw the, the the goodness and the glory of God. Everything about him was woe and corruption. Right, I believe that the same, this, the purpose for um, Michael to come was to was to give Cyrus that experience also, so that his mind could be turned back to the Lord where it began, where he, he was willing and he gave a decree. He says that the Lord commanded me to build his house, and I'm going to build his house. Right, until there were adversaries now. Who was trying to change his mind from what the, from the command that he was already given and so here we have a wrestle for the mind of cyrus and and it was gabriel because gabriel says that there is nobody else he says there is none that hold it with me in these things but michael so if daniel is to receive understanding it's either michael or gabriel you see that so, 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 as it relates to these prophecies, Michael and Gabriel are working together to, to give understanding, to give light unto the people of God. All right? So, so no, Brother Frederick. Yes, yes, Brother Sean. Happy Sabbath. All right, so what, yeah, man, happy Sabbath to you too and everyone else. Um, so what you're saying is the 21 days that Cyrus, Cyrus was the king at that time, right? Um, yeah. We told, um, we stood um, Gabriel. Yeah. It would have been before Michael appeared unto him then. Right. 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 It, it must have been because it says, <laughs> um, look, at, look at what it says here. So, so that would have been before the decree was um was um given to to build back the temple from Cyrus. No, no, no. Cyrus, Cyrus did not change his decree. Cyrus, the the, the, the the building of the temple was not stopped. But it would have been. This is the purpose of Dan, Daniel ten is saying that it Dan, um Cyrus was actually is toying apparently with the idea based on what was being presented to him about these people right apparently he was toying with the idea that these people are going to be to his earth setting up these people would have been to his earth right which of course had there not been a fight or a battle he might have um made a decree to halt the work or to stop it. Are you seeing that? Because it is in the third year of his reign, in the first year rather, he gave the decree to build it. In the third year of his reign is where the problem was. Now the, the, the one, the, the, the person, remember now, the, 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 the king who stopped the work was Smerdis. 
or Artaxerxes. So he gave the decree and it continued with all kind of struggles from this point until this point when it was stopped. Yeah, and then it continued on to Darius. Darius now gave the decree that what Smerdis stopped should continue. Or what Artaxerxes, the same name, stopped, it should continue. All right, but uh, looking at it though, uh, I mean, Gabriel would have been, um, um, and, I mean, would would say he was next next in line after uh, Lucifer. Um, if we can put it that way, yeah. I'm looking at it. Um, I'm thinking probably it it could have been more um more serious than just this. Um, in because I mean he's been withstood by the king of Persia. It seems like it's more than just um. What you'd call it now, human human you efforts. Then put it that way. It, it seems as if it's more, you know, uh, more spiritual. Like there's a spiritual warfare between the devil and um, Gabriel. Because I mean, Gabriel being so powerful, why couldn't he still come to Daniel, even though he's, or let's say that um, um he's trying to convince or trying to you know uh, yeah convince um Cyrus not to um you know based on what the 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 counselors were saying yeah. would that still prevent him from coming to Daniel at that particular time being withstood for for 21 days all right so it says it says that he was withstood let me see it says he withstood um let me see if I can find it look at this It says, fear not. It says, for from the first day that thou set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So Gabriel was the one who was sent to give an answer to the prayer of Daniel. See so what I'm saying? So Gabriel was, was to, 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 to make clear unto Daniel the thing that he was searching on for, um, for to understand. But he could not come at this time. That's what he's saying. Because the prince at this time withstood me for 21 days. For as long as you were, 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 were praying and organizing and fasting, I was being withstood. But Michael came to help me. And this is the point it says, because in other because I was I was left to oversee the kingdom of Persia. So he, his duty was to oversee the kingdom of Persia or the kings of the kingdom of Persia. But he was also commanded to give an answer to Daniel for um, what he was seeking understanding for. While he, and he says, from the first day that you started praying, I was told to come and to give you an understanding and to answer you. But I couldn't leave my position because at that time I was being withstood by the king of Persia. And had not Michael come to help me, then I would not be able to come to you yet either. But Michael came to help me and now I'm able to come. Now, the point, the point that he made um, about it being the prince being um, more like Lucifer, the prince of Persia. I think that's the point. I mean, most times that's what we 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 um I I, I had that viewpoint um some time ago until it, it was become it became clearer to me that when it talks about the prince of Persia in this um in light of this passage, it is speaking specifically of the king because 
here is where it says, after the prince of Persia, after I'm gone, um, it says, now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. So the prince of Greece comes after I'm finished fighting with the prince of Persia. So that fight apparently must have been a, a very long fight because it's from the time of the Medes and the Persian all the way up to the last king of the Persians, which is not e even beyond this list that we have here. All right. So, so if, if the prince of Persia is to be understood to be Lucifer himself, then it is also saying that there is another prince of Greece, which we would not be able to um, give, give, uh, uh, identify. Because this one, if, if the prince of Persia is, is Lucifer, then you ask yourself now, who is the prince of Greece that should come after the prince of Persia? So it is, it is clear to me that the, the prince of Persia here is the actual king who was the head over the kingdom of Persia that um, was reigning over Persia. But when it says that the prince withstood him, then the, here we see now that Lucifer was behind the scene. Because here we see that Gabriel was, was, was fighting for the mind of Cyrus to follow through with the command. And on the other side, Satan was fighting for the mind of um, Cyrus to, to oppose the command. So, of course, while we see um, Gabriel... When it talks about him fighting with the prince or um, fighting um, with the prince of Persia, then it is to be understood also that on the other side, because if God's angel is seeking to make um, the, 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 the the prince, which is which is a human being, to to um, to submit to the will of God, on the other side. We can see that the reason for Cyrus um, seeming to back away from that which he was commanded from the beginning was that there is another agent. So Satan is using human agencies to restrict the work. Right? So, so and that is why when I said that the, um, before that the, 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 the advisors who were advising him must have been um been been um uh influenced by the spirit of satan himself because it is satan that is really um really wants the work to be withheld it's not it's not cyrus All right so it is satan that is trying to withhold the work of god through the means of human agents that were advising the prince of persia Right. So Satan is behind it, of course, but when it says the prince of Persia, I, I, I understand it to be the, the king who is overseeing or leading in the kingdom of Persia. For the very reason that after he is gone, the prince of Greece would come. I hope I didn't make that any more difficult or muddy anything else. Brother Sean, I hope that... No oh man, um, you explained it um, clearly. The, the only little gap that I see is, um, you know, for an intelligent, um, powerful being um, to complete two missions, you know, simultaneously. Oh. You know, um, you know, just to come and explain to Daniel, but he was prevented from doing that as a result of um, attending to. To Cyrus. Yeah. I don't know. It, there's a, some form of limitation there that, you know. <laughs> it well, makes, and, um, 
I wrote the question, but who am I? That is why Michael came, you know? <laughs> and that is why Michael came, I believe. Because at that time, then, the same effect that the vision that Daniel got, I believe Cyrus would have gotten that also. You know? In, in, in Michael coming. And I said, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, a, a, a wrestling, physical wrestling that's going on. Because I know you understand that we, when the ten horns, when it talks about the ten horns, warring, making war with him, and he says, and he overcame them. The Bible in Revelation tells us how, um, how, how they were overcome. It says, God made them to agree and to follow his will right and his will was to to eat up the flesh of the woman and burn her with fire so all the ten horns the over god overcame them causing them to agree to his will and to do his will right so it isn't i don't i don't see a, a, a wrestle i mean in the garden of eden we find the same thing we see the, the war for 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 um for Adam, the fight for Adam. And it was it was a war of words. Who is going to be able to convince Adam that this is the right way or this is the way to go? Right? So there, there was a great battle in the Garden of Eden. It's either God's word or Satan's word. So 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 Satan, Satan knows how to coin his words. To cause the minds of men to, 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 to ponder and to and to wonder. That and 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 it, it I mean we cannot underestimate his is um is is his sophistry and, and, and his ability to, to 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 deceive and to 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 to, to cause people to, to to see things in the in, in, in the way that he sees it or wants them to see it except that except that christ gives them the power over his sophistries so it was a great battle that was going on there because the mind the mind the, the, the king the king of um persia was important to the work that god was carrying out it was the king of persia that would would make sure that the plans of God and the timeline for the building of his temple and the building of his city would be would, would, would be completed within the times that God had appointed for it to be done. Right? So there was a time of timeline that that um, God was also working with. And that is why I was able to say you now, in the time when the, the from the time that the command is given to build. Jerusalem and the walls thereof. From that time, we're going to count 2,300 days, and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, if, if, if the work is withheld, um, and, 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 and the buildings, the preparation for the buildings and the, and the work were not completed for this point in time when this command is to be given, then it would have been delayed. You know, so there are, were a lot of things, I believe, that were involved. And Satan was behind it, using a, human agents, of course, because we are not seeing um, Satan himself, but we are seeing um, the names of those, it says, that were the adversaries. Of course, it would have been Satan as at work in these men who were advising the king. So if you, your eyes are, were to be open into the... the, the, the view of what was happening i'm sure we would see satan standing at the at, 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 at the, the, the 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 right hand of these counselors that were counseling um um cyrus and on the other side would have gabriel you understand so gabriel was was apparently having a struggle within this war he, he had a struggle that 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 Satan or Lucifer was having a field day with the mind of, of um, Cyrus until Michael came to settle the matter.
And so now, because because this is his station, this this was the station that he was placed, and he couldn't leave the station. He, though he wanted to leave to go to give Daniel understanding, he says he couldn't leave. He says I, I couldn't leave at that time, because from the first day you started praying, I was told to come and to give you understanding, but I couldn't leave. And so Michael came and helped me. Now I'm able to leave. And when I'm finished now, I'm going to go back. You understand? But when I'm, when I'm gone from, 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 from um, this post that I have been appointed, then you're going to have another prince coming. All right? So this is, this is how I see it in, a, in, in, a, in, in the broad, broad sense and the, the, the details that I, um, I can find as it relates to that. Now, when we look at another, the, um, I think it is Ezekiel, um, we talk about Tyrus. All right. Uh, all right. Tyrus. I think this is the chapter that we normally associate with what we're reading in Daniel. Okay, right. Yeah, it's chapter 20 and 26. Uh, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. Have you ever, you ever read this and, 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 and realized there are two persons to which this prophecy is, is referring to two separate persons. Normally we read this prophecy or this um this word to Tyrus. And it says it speaks to the prince of Tyrus. And it says these things because it because thine art is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. You remember, right, let me just show you something else. I'm going some places that um not ready to explore it, you know, but let me go there. All right. All right let me look at Daniel 11. Daniel chapter 11. All right. Speaking of the king of the north, look what it says. He shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. So we see that a king would plant his place of his rule between the seas and when it says between the seas it means between two seas one is the dead sea and one is the mediterranean sea this is where jerusalem is we look at a map at map jerusalem or, or israel or map of israel All right, so, ah, all right, look at this picture. There are two seas here. This one is called the Dead Sea. Can you see it? And this is the Mediterranean Sea. The glorious holy mountain is the one that is between the two seas. All right? which is Jerusalem. So when it says that, um, go back here, he shall plant this tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. It, it's speaking, or it's referring to um, Jerusalem, which is the holy mountain. Now, it talks about 
it says you are, are a man and not God. Those, but those set thine heart as the heart of God. Now look at this one now. Oh, second Thessalonians. It says, it says, let no man deceive you, 2 Thessalonians 2, by any means, for that day shall not come except they be fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, this is not making a reference specifically to or, 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 or to any angel, but it is speaking about a man who will take the place of God. Here, when it talks about the prince of Tyre, it says, you lift up your, um, lift it up, your heart and has said I am a God I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas it is in Jerusalem yet art thou a man and not God though thou set thine heart as the heart of God behold thou art wiser than Daniel there is no secret that they can hide from thee with thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches and hath gotten gold and silver in thy treasures by thy great wisdom and thy traffic as thou increase thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches therefore thus saith the lord god because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of god behold therefore i will bring strangers upon thee the terrible of the nations and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom and they shall defile thy brightness they shall bring thee down to the pit and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Will thou yet say before him that slay thee, I am, a, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slay thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised, by the, uns, um, by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Now, notice from verse 1 all the way to verse 10 is refer, referring to the prince of Tyre. See that? Now, verse 11 goes into something different. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre." And say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz. Of obviously, this is not talking about a human, a man. So there is a difference being made between the prince of Tyre and the king of Tyre. So the prince of Tyre is here being um, represented as the son of this person or the child or the seed of this person. So Lucifer is being referenced here, the covering cherub. So sometimes we, we read and we don't see a difference, but the, 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 it makes a difference between the, 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 the prince of Tyre, sorry, and the king of Tyre in Ezekiel chapter 28. So it refers to the prince of Tyre as the one who sits in the temple of God, who is a man who, who, who thinks himself to be God himself. And then it now it refers to the one who is behind him and it calls him the king of Tyre. So you have the prince of Tyre and the king of Tyre. 
here the king of Tyre is 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 um Lucifer himself. The prince of Tyre is the actual the one that we call the king, but he is the he is actually the head of the kingdom of the um the 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 the, 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 the um Zidonians, right? So sometimes these little details are are in the the passages and we 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 pass them because um well I I hear sometimes that we 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 miss the we miss the the, the forest because we are looking at the leaves but if we don't sometimes we just need to um come a little closer and look at the leaves because in 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 looking at the leaves or the limbs we realize how intricately um intertwined are together these things come together to make up what we call the forest all right so generally when i hear um people describe or to explain ezekiel 28 they 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 they, they treat it as one broad thing that deals with lucifer the one who um he says i am i will be like the most high and so forth but it makes a distinction between a prince and a king and it says that the prince is the man, right? And the one who, who's behind him is the king, which is, is Satan himself. So I see it in the same in the same way or the same um, light with as it regards to um, Cyrus and all the kings of Persia, that there was one who was behind them all, or was behind all what they were doing, or influencing them, or the one who was fighting. So, so he is, he is the, um, Satan, of course, is the one who is, is um, influencing the kings, all the kings of the kingdoms. And that is why Gabriel was sent or appointed in this um, time period to ensure that um, the, 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 the purposes of God would be fulfilled and, and Satan wouldn't have full reign to do what he pleased. Right, so so I mean, in terms of directing the minds of the kings. So so Gabriel was appointed to 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 um to to pretty much slow down some of the things that Satan would want to be um would want to accomplish um according to his will. Of course, you know that Satan doesn't have full reign to do everything that he wants to do. And here, here we get a glimpse of what is happening behind the scenes in the, in the invisible world, that there is a battle for the minds of people, and especially the, the kings who are to carry out the, the, the missions that would show the fulfillment of the prophecies, as we have seen them in the books of Daniel and Revelation. So, yeah. Ah. I, I, I really hope that the things are, are actually coming a little clearer. You know, sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly how, how well we are seeing um, the things that are presented, if they, if they are becoming clearer to us or they are, they are, they are getting, you know, a little more fuzzy. I'd, I'd prefer not to go further with, with some of the studies except that they are the ones that we have gone through already are clear unto us and i hope things are becoming clearer and especially with these that we we have done um this topic this morning or this passage or the passages that we have looked through this morning we can see the the connections that can be made between them or among them so i hope things are becoming clearer i really hope so yeah So you recorded this? Yes, I was recording it. I was recording it. I don't know how long it's going to be now. Maybe I should just stop the recording now. I'm going to stop the recording.